Hi, I'm Daniel Polizic with VMware. And I'm Rebecca Fitzy with Rubrik. We're here today to talk a little more deeper about vCloud Director and the VMware Cloud Provider Platform and Rubrik integration. As you're well aware, VCD is a services platform that can perform not just IaaS functionalities, but true services in a multi-tenant fashion. So starting off, we're going to actually cover some of the architecture bits and really talk about a high-level architecture between VCD and Rubrik. So starting off, VCD in the back end is backed by one or many vCenters. So when I draw out a vCenter here, we have our vCenter or associated vSphere instances, our storage, and then our networking, our NSX networking. We can have one or many vCenters attached to the Cloud Director. These are also commonly referred to as a provider VDC or provider virtual data center. Now what happens on the front end is we create organizations or tenants. So when we create a tenant, we expose organization VDC. So let me go ahead and draw out tenant one and we'll draw out a little cloud for their respective organization VDC. And then we'll have tenant two that also has its own respective carve out of the resources. Most recently, we can also now expose SDDCs or dedicated vCenters inside of vCloud Director. So let's talk about more of the services and especially around backup and recoverability and what Rubrik brings to the table within this architecture. Absolutely, so I think every service provider wants to provide at a minimum level backup as a service, right? That's right. So Rubrik, we can absolutely do that. And so for our architecture, it is a single software fabric that scales out as much as you need. So if you need additional computer storage resources, no problem, you can simply go ahead and scale that out, right? And in a very similar fashion to vCloud Director, we support multi-tenancy. So for multi-tenancy, you would, within Rubrik, go ahead and define what those organizations are. So in this case, we'll have org one, and we'll have org two. And we generally will recommend a one-to-one -one mapping with VCD, so a tenant should be backed by an org and rubric. And then within that organization, we can go ahead and define things like what users and what workloads and really define what functionality is available to that user by our back. Excellent. So what you're saying, Rebecca, is then I can apply this policy associated to an organization that's inherent inside of vCloud Director and get granular at the tenant level mm -hmm. based off of maybe a gold silver, bronze level of service. Yeah, so you'll absolutely define what that's going to be and then what basically functionality within Rubrik is going to be allocated to that. Okay, great, excellent. So let's talk about, you know, we'll cover some of the functionality inside of the plugin, but typically what we've talked about in the past is the Rubrik plugin inside of the VCD UI. What's available via the API? That's a great question. So first of all, we do all of our backup and restore functionality with vCloud Director through the VCD API. So thank you very much for having a very robust API that makes that possible. Great. Secondly, um, whenever we provide that plugin, it is making all of its calls back to Rubrik, right? So it is an API first platform. So everything that we're doing via that uh, plugin is getting proxy proxied back to our APIs themselves. And again, that's all based on the organization permissions, right? Which is proxied by the VCD uh, functionality inside of the inherent services. Absolutely. There. So, okay. So let's talk about some of uh, the services that are available in the plugin. Uh, so maybe the top five functionality components that a tenant can use or a provider can use inside of vCloud Director UI or the API. Absolutely. So. To, you know, to kind of start, you know, we start everything with an SLA policy, and that's going to define things like how often you should back up, what the retention policy is, whether or not you should replicate, and when and where to archive, right? And so we expose that functionality to VCD via plugin. And so what functionality specifically that's available is going to be the ability to assign protection, right? So assign an SLA. Secondly, you're going to be able to do an on-demand snap. Right? So if you're about to, for example, do some maintenance and you want to go ahead and protect that vApp before doing so, you can go ahead and specify, yes, take an on-demand snapshot right now rather than waiting till the next scheduled backup. And a very popular thing that uh, our providers will do within vCloud, vCloud Director is they'll actually specify within Rubrik a separate SLA policy just for on-demand snaps. That mm. way it's retained at a different 
level than the rest of your regularly scheduled backups, right? So if you say, you know what, on-demand snapshot, just store it for three days, no problem. You'll go ahead and take that on-demand snap, associate it with your on-demand snap SLA, and it'll retain it for a different period of time than everything else. That's great. Yeah, and then on the recovery side of things, we have the ability to do an instant recovery and the ability to do an export. And those are done at the VApp level. And then one other piece of functionality here is a file level recovery. So jumping back to instant recovery for a VApp, can you explain what that is and what's the context of that? Am I popping up a new VApp that's immediately populated to the UI or API? It's a great question. So first thing you're going to define um, is what VApp needs to be recovered. So you'll okay. select that and then you'll say instant recovery. Okay. And what an instant recovery does is it actually deprecates this VApp. Because right, we've now said this isn't working, we need to recover from backup. So it goes ahead and it deprecates it, and then we instantiate a brand new VApp based off of the point in time that you selected. And it's going to be running temporarily off of the rubric storage, and then it will storage vMotion over to wherever you've defined. Um, so all in all, it takes about mm, 60 seconds to recover a workload, and you will see that populate within your VCD. Excellent, wow, that's that's amazing. So uh, jumping ahead to file level recovery, I think everybody kind of understands <laughs> file level recovery for how backups work, but let's talk about a common uh, use case, which is an isolated VApp uh, mm -hmm. environment, right? How does that work with Rubrik? It's a great question. So. First of all, we would need to have some kind of communication with that VApp that's isolated to be able to protect it, right? So we have something called Envoy, which is a trusted ambassador that basically extends your rubric functionality over into an isolated network, right? So it is multi-home, so it has that connectivity to the back-end network that you're using for backup communication, as well as the connection to the isolated network. And we have limited communication, specifically only to the protocols that we use, and there's a certificate that ensures that authenticity between yeah, and implies that level of trust. Absolutely. That's great. Excellent. All right. So then next up, when we talk about availability zones, or what I like to call distinct uh, fault domains, I may have Atlanta here in, let's say, Charlotte location, two independent VCD environments, two independent rubric environments. Inside of vCloud Director, we have something called multi-site federation. So what we can do is an organization can federate their credentials between a, apply a level of trust and from the UI access either side at any given time. How do we work with this within Rubrik? What can we provide within that? Absolutely. So with the Rubrik, you have a couple of different models of consumption, one of which is something called Edge. So if this is more of a remote or small site, you could use a scaled down version of Rubrik to protect that. Now, if this is a full on site, and we're talking like active active or even mm -hmm. you know, an active and a failover site, yep. what you could do is you could have another cluster of Rubrik running and you could have those two separate Rubrik clusters actually replicating back and forth to each other. That way, if this site were to go down, we could recover it back in our yeah. first site. And that's another opportunity for a provider to essentially offer a service for multi-site backup and recovery along with cloud services. Absolutely, and that's with that. defined within your SLA domain. That's great. Yeah. All right. Um, it, for more information, please go to vcpp.cloud or rubric.com. Thank you, and have a great day.